Hello, it's it's so nice to see you all. Uh, at the same time, I was hoping for like half of you here uh, because it's still uh, I'm I'm doing that. Uh, my, my first my first uh, Azure by example was like seven, probably eight years ago or more, and I'm still doing that, and it's still quite kind of uh, making me sick to stand here and talk to you all. And building on those uh, on those two things that happened, to those two talks that we have seen uh, before me, the first one was uh, why leaders suck, and I will somehow try to connect with that throughout this talk, also. And the second reflection about the Red Hat uh, friend is that uh, don't you see that they? Want they did their transformation in a way they create open source software, which is somehow super amazing, because if you take Agile, uh, it just in any transformation it's like this glass of water. If you put it in an organization that's black and command and control, it will look black, and if you put it in the open source community, it will look yellow, which is somehow interesting, isn't it? But today, uh, and I'm, I'm talking to people for a while, uh, I'm doing Scrum a bit too long, and I've seen a bit too many transformation in, transformations in, in my life. I hope I still uh, have some sanity. Uh, and not talking about me, uh, I want to mention um, very important people. You like the community. It's uh, the thirteenth uh, Agile by example, and today I had a s such such an amazing amount of great moments, meeting many many fantastic people, and having talks and and connecting, and it's so cool that we have such an amazing community, isn't it? <laughs> so. If Kasia is laughing, probably I'm talking shit, so I'll move on. Uh, we will be talking, I will be talking today about sprint goals, uh, boring, and value, boring. Had anybody, uh, any one of you heard a sentence from a team, uh, it's impossible to create a sprint goal in the sprint? Anybody? Hands up. Whoa, interesting. Uh, or maybe you have heard, let's just take the biggest story. <laughs> okay, hmm, interesting. Uh, or maybe you've seen my favorite, my personal best sprint goal, which is doing all the scope. Aren't they amazing? Yeah, they are still here. And I will try to show you there's a reason they happen. And I'm sorry for the boxes, I'm not a professional artist, but you probably can already see that. There was a waterfall one day, uh, sadly, we don't have any water, like good, proper water shops, uh, waterfall shops around, uh, around Poland, any that I know of. Uh, waterfall was somehow organized. Uh, I'm much more organized in the places where it was done right than most of Agile Bonanza that we see today. Uh, so, at least they were designing, developing, blah, 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 and so on. Yeah. So, phases. Let's assume each phase takes a month. It would never happen, as we all know, because development always takes too long. They will start development just when they finish the last project that was half a year late. So, uh, let's, let's uh, assume it's just a model. Uh, we started having a book of the documentation, like this big or this big. We have somebody analyzing that, so we know what we want to deliver. And then at the end, of this, like after five months, or like three years usually, we would have a system, hopefully working. Something that's, that might be different than we wanted. But we all know that. Yeah. And then they realized they want to introduce something different. Uh, somebody went, uh, in, like a CEO, went to Lufthansa flight, read the magazine in Lufthansa, and in the magazine there was a 
short story editorial about Agile. And they realized it's just for them because it was going to be faster and smoother and we will deliver just what is needed. So we embarked on a journey, the, the company embarked on a journey for agility. So first we started with fixing the development guys, of course, because it's always late in development. Then we realize uh, maybe it's not only about the development, maybe it's not only, not only about putting those developers and designers together, maybe let's have something tangible at the end of the sprint. It will not, it's not going to be delivered to the customers. Like, we are a special company. We cannot do like that in our company, you know. We have a testing team, and uh, now we split them into, into parts, into teams, and we will integrate once and release once because, you know, releasing is costly, and at the same time we don't have environments. Who had too little environments? Anybody? Hmm, pretty common. Uh, so, after that, we realized that, that they employed some Agile coaches and the Agile coach said, oh, but it's not Scrum or it's not working and, um, anyhow because it's not ready to release. So, they put integration in, they put the integration into definition of done, which was hopefully working. Who has the working definition? Oh, no, no, don't, don't raise your hands. Uh, it may be too confrontational. Uh, I see one hand, yeah, I a special gift for you, sir. Uh, and let's talk about how you do that. And so after uh, each sprint, we will have some kind of a pizza out of the oven that we can inspect, that we can show to our stakeholders, to the customer, to somebody who ordered the scope. I didn't mention that, but in all of those approaches, you just have the same scope defined up front as in waterfall, but cut into smaller pieces. Just a list, like, let's call it a product backlog, yeah? which is just a turned over uh, Gantt chart. Anybody seen that? Hands up? No, quite common. I don't know if what, what, what happens with the other people that didn't raise their hands. I'm somehow surprised. Uh, so, we want to deliver the scope. And we deliver the scope each sprint, and we are super happy. And after those five months, we release something to the customer just to realize it's shit. Uh, impossible, but it, it was meant to be different. So then somebody, maybe one day, starts to think, OK, maybe we can work on our technical depth. Maybe we can get some more environments. Maybe we can streamline CICD and whatnot. And we will deliver some part of the scope every sprint to production. Maybe hidden somewhere, maybe not shown to our customers, but still we have something tangible at the end of the sprint. Nice. Yeah. Quite a sad story. Why I'm saying sad? Because if you look at the Scrum Guide, Scrum was meant to be a learning tool. Scrum wasn't meant to be a tool to deliver a predefined scope, you know. Isn't it strange? Because most of you are working in the companies, I bet you do, in the companies that try to deliver a scope with Scrum. Right? Who has it differently? Who does a lot of hypotheses? Don't raise your hands. You're, you're having your own business. It's cheating. Uh, again, I know you too, like, you might be lying. <laughs> so, Scrum was meant to be a tool to fantasize about some idea, to get some hypothesis and to try to implement it in a way that delivers value to the customer, to some mythical customer. So every sprint we want to have this, uh, does it work? this pizza, and some feedback about our pizza from our customers. Like, this is like trivial. Yes, it should be data, it should be any relation to value. So we have this kind of path. Like, it's a model. Let's, assume, like, like, let's face it. 
models are wrong. Yeah? Some are use useful and some are useless. But I hope this might be useful for you. So there's a certain path we follow in those transformations. Maybe some of us work in the uh, open source companies and they tend to go a different path, but the general idea about the transformation that I, transformations I've seen is follow some kind of this path. And when I ask people on trainings where they are, where is their company, they say somewhere around here, with some outliers here. What does it mean? It does mean that most of us use Scrum for a different purpose that it was meant to be used, which might be tough. Um, and probably one of the last questions. Who feels, who felt in their professional career that he or she is on the edge of burnout? Hands up. Oh, that, was, that was pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> a lame try, yeah? So, and when the bur where does the burnout, burnout may come from? In my head, it comes from frustration a lot. Yeah, like we try to change those organizations. We want to make for better. We want to make them help themselves and work and you know, self-organize and be happy. Yeah? And in the same time, it goes usually sideways. I won't ask you whose transformation goes sideways. Uh, it might be too much of a revealing. But why I'm showing you all that? The problem starts here. If you have one of those three top scenarios, what is the only, the only thing you can track in this place that is cut during your development process is man hours or percent of scope done. You know, like, who have seen a uh, project that was 80% done 80% uh, of the time? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, interesting. Isn't it? Like, you know it's impossible. Yeah? So the only things that, that, the only connection to any kind of value is hours, man hours or effort. Yeah? If we want to ask the people, like ask the product owner working in those three scenarios, and let's, uh, let's um, talk value. Let's define value in our team. Let's define value behind our stories. And he will say, okay, I have it somewhere deep in my backlog. It's for a reason. It's not because he just don't want to talk to you. It's because in the environment you're in, it's just useless. There's also a scenario where you have almost Scrum, where you are almost ready to release, or when you are ready to release some scope, where you just can say, oh, this amount of scope is ready. This amount of value is ready to be released. You can even inspect it somehow. With a almost Scrum, when you don't release it to production, it's there, there is this, this still gray area of, of depth behind that, though. In this Scrum approach, like proper Scrum, meaning at the end of each sprint there is a increment, because we use Scrum to have an increment at the end of each sprint. If we don't have it, then it's not using Scrum. Yeah? So we can measure, again, scope done. And if you think about it, if you define the scope here, if you have it defined and you just do one but do it the scope one by one, what's the incentive to measure value? If you have somebody, some deciders, some big stakeholders saying, we need to have those features. We need to have them by the end of October, in this quarter, in this milestone. And then we deliver it and after half a year, we ask them, oh, and what was the value behind that? Like, who will say it was useless? Like, the one that decided that we should spend, like, millions of euros? It will be utterly stupid, isn't it? 
So if we expect those people, like the designers, if we expect organizations to measure value in these scenarios when Scrum is used solely to deliver scope, it might be a big failure. So the same thing goes with sprint goals. Yes. First one, doing something is our goal. Like, let's do it for the whole sprint. Let's have something. Let's have our hands busy. Let's get our hands dirty for the whole sprint. Nice. Let's be doing something. Uh, let's deliver the whole scope. Then we have with this scrum, we will have let's deliver all the scope and like the biggest story wins. And the first moment in the when the, where the sprint goes gets handy is when we are able to get the customer feedback because the sprint goal is there to provide focus because we focus on the value to the customer and we get feedback out of it. So the good sprint goal is a North Star and it's connected to impact. So whenever we are focused on scope delivery, whenever we are focused on scope delivery in quarter, in, in, in milestones, in half years, in whatever, Sprint goal might be hard to create because it's rarely connected to impact. Yeah? And the same thing about talking uh, value. If we are about the scope, we cannot find, we might not have, we might not find a connection to value. So it's wrong. And let's go uh, kill ourselves. Not really. And the thing I want to leave with you is that if you are facing a scenario where the company is in a certain context, just look at the context, understand the context, and try to move one step ahead. When you are unable to discuss the value with your product owner, maybe the thing your product owner, so your customer as, your agile co as an agile coach or a scrum master, maybe the, the thing that he or she needs is some help delivering the scope. Is this predictability? I know it's wrong. I know it's not using Scrum properly, but still, you are working in this company to deliver value there, and the value needed is not your prophecy about Scrum and people having dancing together and being fun. It's your help in delivering value every day. And maybe one day, when you are able to be pred predictable, maybe you will build credibility to talk value with them, and they will ask you, how can we improve that? And as long as we... As we struggle, as we get frustrated and burnt out trying to sell them the things that they don't want, maybe let's focus on things that we can actually do. It may, may take years for an organization to transition one level. I've seen that. I've seen that a lot. Because maybe we're trying to solve the wrong problem. Because our customer is the team, and our customer, at the same time, and the same rules, is the organization. Thank you. <laughs> well, we have quite a few questions from the audience. Uh, the first one is, is it better to have a bad sprint goal or no sprint goal? <laughs> <laughs> he asked me this before in my talk. Yeah, like... Never. <laughs> I think trying is, uh, trying is worth it. Though, like, if you try the bad sprint goal, like, for the fifth time and you're still struggling, maybe you're approaching it in the wrong, from the wrong direction, I'd say. Like, it's not a black or white situation. Like, it's not the perfect model. It's not the only model you can find. Um, so another question that we have. Uh, whose voice is necessary to get to Scrum from earlier stages? Whose voice? Yes. Uh -huh. I think it's like connected to the top-down, bottom-up. Uh, okay. Uh, I think we, sh we, m we should be familiar or we should understand the fact that organization and its culture is evolving very slowly. And if you have an organization that is on some level, you can move on only as fast as middle management. And it's not me, it's Craig Larman, basically if we are able to uh, somehow convince the middle management to change, to influence the culture of the company, we can, uh, we can move it, in my, at least in my head. It's my personal 
idea about that. Thank you. So the last one, uh, how to increase the incentives to measure value? Uh, help teams deliver value. Like help teams predictably deliver value. Focus on moving, making teams deliver value. Like helping them be a vital part of organization and be and for the teams to be a like, valued partner in delivering value to the customers. Thank you very much, Adam.